Today on the bench, we've got a CVR D1004 power amp, and it's out for cleaning right now, out of the rack for cleaning. Let's open it up. So this is based off of Power, PowerSoft design, probably um, more copy and paste than anything, I believe. So it's rated at eight, a thousand watts at eight ohms per channel. There are four channels. Uh, these come in blue or black and very small attenuators. The signal lights, so it's signal and power, signal, signal, power, signal. Um, the uh, lights turn red if you clip them. I've only seen it clip one time. And it was so loud in the room. The weird thing about these attenuators is there is a center detent. I have two, two of these amplifiers in blue, one in black. The black one does not have a center detent. I don't know why these blue ones do. That's really weird. Uh, looks like I need to clean the, um, clean the foam out again. So airflow is... Uh, I believe it's back to front. It's probably actually front to back. So air is coming in this way, which is why there's dust on it here. So looking on the back, you've got your power input here, power con. This can be either 110 to 240, auto sensing. So essentially, essentially it'll um, detect, um, detect what it is and run off of whatever, which is really nice. So I'm running this off of 110, uh, which means 110 volts, which means a typical 4 ohm load on all four channels will pull about, if you drive it hard into clip, it'll pull about 19 amps, which is a lot of power. So make sure that uh, you've got a good source. You can also use this with an L630 if you want to do that and get your 2 220 out of it, 220 volt out of it. I'm in America, so we're using 110 everywhere, but we do have 220 available. Okay, on the input side, you've got four XLR inputs, A through D. Your output's here. Channel A carries channel B on the pins two. Channel C carries channel D on pins two. Makes it easy if you're doing bi-amp or if you're doing um, yeah, it just makes it easier for wiring patch panels. This gets used with a patch panel. So inputs are never moved, outputs are never moved. So on the inside, uh, this side you've got your, sorry about the bad camera. So on this side you've got your power supply. Here, four channels, 1,000 watts at eight, 1,700 at four, 2,800 at two. It will drive a two ohm load, no problem. Uh, you can bridge channels, you can bridge pairs, uh, which I think is like 5,600 at four if you bridge A and B together, but that's a lot of power. Selectable um, input, um, sorry, selectable input gain. I have these set to 32 dB gain, which is around 1.4. If you're used to like QSC amps or something like that, it's going to be similar. What else? What else? Um, <clears throat> this is a one rack space setup. So one thing you got to watch for with these is how strong are the rack ears. And actually the rack ears are very, uh, very well built. So it looks like the chassis, very well made. Um, one thing you're going to want to do with this is if you are using this, um, it's okay to stack these. These run cold. And I stack them in a rack here that's got stuff below it and stuff above it. And that helps keep the torque on the rack ears down because this thing, when it gets moved, obviously the weight is about uh 15 pounds something like that so there's a fair amount of weight on these rack ears when you're dealing with one space racks you really got to watch out for that also the 
the smaller amplifiers, and this is one of them, um, are only a certain amount in depth, and then the larger amplifiers are even deeper. So make sure that when you're ordering, you know which what, what you're getting, and you have a case to put it in. Um, I see these a lot of times where amplifiers will be stacked with a space between them. I just don't see the reason. These don't get hot. They run cool. Uh, they're efficient. They put out rated power. Or there's a um, couple of there's a couple of dealers in the United States, and that's always a good way to go. That way you've got service on it. You know, you've got a, a warranty on it. I don't know what it is, like a year or something like that. But uh, this particular amplifier is three years old. No issues whatsoever. It does get cleaned out yearly. So today was the day for this year. I think that's it. Um, time to put the lid back on and get it back in service. This is one of the smallest of the amplifiers that CVR makes. But I chose this particular model because I don't need 4,300 watts at 8 ohms per channel. That's just a little much. 1,000 watts is just fine for what I do. All right, a quick word about patch bays. So once the amp is installed, it makes it really easy just to put a patch bay on here. Plug your speakers in. There's... Uh, there's our uh, Wi-Fi connection to both the mixer and one for the DBX drive rack, which doesn't get used that much. And we have an extra pair of speaker outputs here because we have a couple extra channels outputs. There's an X32 here. Channels 13 through 16 are pre-wired. 15, 16 go to the drive rack. Three-way stereo, which is... There it is. And we have... Lows and mids going to the CVR amplifier. Highs going to channel one and two of the uh, high frequency amp, and then a spare couple of channels here. So when you're hooking your amp back up, oh look at that, it's labeled C and D. Hooks right in. A and B. So both A and B come out of channel A. Very nice. A lot of QSCs do that, a lot of crowns, PVs, Yamahas all do that. All right, that's it. Um, if y'all want to see a video on building a custom patch bay, let me know.